All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of the Brick by Brick podcast. I'm here with Alex, uh, with the rise goes by in dark, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, that is uh, correct. In dark. In dark on Roblox. Um, he's done all kinds of work on the platform. Very successful individual. And um, yeah, so we're, we're just kind of here to talk to him today and uh, get some advice and things that uh, he kind of has experience with that he may be able to ride knowledge on. Uh, I guess my first question for you would just kind of be, well, I mean, if you want to introduce yourself first, go ahead, uh, you know, floor is yours. Yeah, sure. Hello, my name is uh, Alex, otherwise known as Anark, as you know, previously stated. I am a Roblox developer. I primarily do programming at the moment as of the last couple of years, but I, I started, got my start on uh, 3D art and such. The... At the moment, um, I, I've got a few projects I'm working on, sort of like in secret, but I think my most success has come through brands and companies and working with various companies on the platform, such as Mound Development at first, uh, GameFam, and recently Suit Up Games, which unfortunately has crashed and burned and is no longer with us. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. You know, that, that's a bit of my background and you know, happy to be here. All right. I mean, I guess you kind of. I was gonna say if you could briefly describe your work on the platform, but that that pretty much does it. Um, yeah. What would you say uh, historically you're most most known for working on? I know you said you work with brands. Is there any specific experiences? Um, I think my most notable, I guess, my my more favorite ends or, or ones that I'm most proud of mm -hmm. um, are less brand related. I think getting the chance to work with amazing teams for clicker simulator and dungeon quest and nuke simulator and such um even if they're on on minuscule scale we're still really fun i got to meet a lot of people um those are definitely more on the cooler end and i would say more of my notable stuff um brand wise i think the coolest brands i've ended up getting to work with was nerf actually got to work with nerf on three separate occasions at oh, wow. three different companies yeah it was it was a little bit crazy and i got to um, talk to the same people. It's like, hey, what are you doing here? It was, uh, it, it's definitely a, a great experience working with them. Yeah. yeah that's, also, that's also a little bit of how Roblox seems to just sort of be in the space. Anyway. Like I know uh, in terms of working with brands altogether, you end up working with a lot of the same people sometimes just because everyone sort of What's floats around and does their own thing. So, um, yeah. Um, okay. So I guess the question I have for you is... Um, do you do you find that so when when you say you're working with brands are you coming on as like a full-time programmer for them or are you like a contractor most of the time um do you reach out and do a very specific thing for them and then you know you you one thing and then you don't that's like what you do for that project or are you kind of on for the whole thing yeah so uh, essentially it started out as contract based doing 3d art and such building environments mm. um just general th 3d generalist related things uh ugc items and, and so on and whatnot um, then it moved into programming. So I would do programming for these brand events, uh, making sure everything worked, things were laid out. Technically, technical art as well, because I'd do some environment work and 3D art there here and there. Uh, but then it progressed more into production and programming and making sure, like, doing lead, leading teams, making sure everything's good, making sure the client's happy. Um, sometimes the client is not as, you know, easy to work with, but that's sort of the balance that I have to play with in order to make sure my team is as uh, happy and easygoing and um, committed and motivated as possible while still dealing with the the brand asking for updates every hour or so right um, yeah yeah what do you do you think uh there was any specific skills that transferred over from being a programmer or a 3d artist to sort of being in more of that project management position i think so yeah um i think that the best part of it is the fact of i can understand how my developers and people on my team will think react and kind of work with sure right. everyone's kind of different uh but it, essentially it, it allows me to be open-minded to making decisions for myself and for my team members and everyone like that yeah that makes sense yeah very very interesting um i guess then an another good question for you might be how do you kind of plan when you go in for a new project you know for me um, I'm I'm very programming based, so I do mostly script. I, I'm you know, by scripting, you also loosely know how everything else works. But um, sure. 
for me, I, I've personally been doing UML recently and just modeling language, and I just like for to personally draw stuff out. I have to know <laughs> what I'm doing. I, very, I find that if I get into a project, this is actually something that happened with someone I'm working with right now. Yeah. Um, if I don't very clearly set the boundaries of what's being looked for, then I am um, end up start programming the thing, and then uh, I have to spend a random two or three hours in the middle of it uh, figuring out yeah where that missing line is um in terms of what they're specifically looking for um so do you have anything yeah. you do to plan out for a new project before you actually begin yes um so essentially there, there's multiple uh regions of this i'd say um the, the first more brick line baseline everything is you one have to have an idea and you have to in your best way sh put documentation to it so that way everyone else can understand your vision as perfectly as possible. Mm. Of course, you know, with time constraints and everything like that, you can't get everything right. But as long as you have a nice firm baseline, you're good. Um, and then it moves more onto, okay, so now I have to go in, in the technical side. Um, how, as a programmer, should this all be laid out? How, um, how will it work game-wise? Gameplay, everything. How are we gonna do this even on the data backend side? Mm -hmm. um, after that, you'll get to planning actual tasks and setting out roadmaps and timelines, um, things like sprints. Maybe it's a one-week sprint, two-week sprint, or even a month sprint of getting to a certain moment to where we can, okay, we can now test the game, it's different, so on and so forth. Right. We're getting to release build, essentially. It's very interesting to hear you say it because the, uh, the Agile and, and Scrum frameworks are very large in software development, but I'm not sure how familiar uh, some people will be here. So if you want to elaborate on that a little bit real quick. Yeah, so uh, essentially I think the, the Scrum I idealistic uh, mindset for, for, well, for one, why it works essentially is um, it keeps people looking forward to, okay, they need to have something in tomorrow or the next day or whenever they have to do another update. They have to make sure that they have something in. So it kind of keeps people working. Um, I see it more as a stress-inducing thing, personally. But I think you can, with, with proper planning, you can kind of have it mitigated in a way. Um, but Scrums itself, uh, by basically having a list of things, okay, you checked off for this day. Um, what, what did you do? What problems did you have? What things you actually need unblocked? That's a very big, important step that many people forget, mm. is is also a list of things that, okay, if you're blocked and you need someone else's work to get done first for you to do this, you need to list those out too, because it's it's team communication at that point. Um, you might not be spending time directly talking to each other, uh, so scrums are a good way to be able to kind of log, okay, what is my team up to? What do they need from me, or what do they need from someone else? What can I do to help them, essentially? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so for anyone that's listening that's not super familiar with these, it's sort of just a way of organizing the flow of... Uh... Of, I guess project completion um, and how how you want to sort of arrange in what order you want to do things when do you want to get things done by um, generally I guess a sprint can be anywhere from maybe two to four weeks I would say on average and that's just getting very specific things done um, and trying to make sure you're on track which is sort of a, a, a lost art when you don't have a, some kind of framework yeah. in mind for it um, yeah um, so a question I had here for you was, uh, what do you think is the most essential skill for building a career on Roblox today? Because I used to think, you know, you obviously need to have a skill to market yeah. because that's like if you don't, if you're not solving a problem of some kind, then you don't, you know, have really have a product. Um, yeah. But there's there's definitely other things that like this this YouTube thing has been a very interesting endeavor for me. I don't totally know what I'm doing yet, and a lot of it is still just for fun. Um, for sure. But uh, there's there's a whole other side to doing this, which is just kind of like, uh, you know, soft skills are very important, especially as a, a freelancer working with a bunch of different people. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people who uh, end up super deep in the programming end, end up lacking in their soft skills to some extent. Um, yeah. And there's just there's just so many different things. What do you think is like essential for someone to know in order to get to a position like you where they're making a living on the platform? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come at this from a separate set kind of direction. Um, two things I think that people should have, or maybe even if it's kind of a skill, is curiosity and passion. 
Mm. You can do almost anything on Roblox as long as you have the curiosity to learn or know more about something or do something, whether that's programming, 3D art, more about marketing, curiosity, how the algorithm works, mm. um, and then passion, because passion is what's going to keep you driven. It's going to allow you to create things that genuinely is fun. And I think that's something a lot of Roblox games, I wouldn't say so much lacking because everyone has their own form of fun. And I think having the passion will allow you to create something that people will genuinely love um, and genuinely play and share with all their friends and everything like that. Just get some laughters in there. Um, those two are most definitely essential. Other than that, I think th everything else is kind of like secondary, tertiary. Right. Because it, it comes, it stems from the baseline of curiosity and passion. Because you'll just pick up whatever you want if you have those two. Yeah, and it feels like some at some point there's kind of like... Um, in t well, I guess in terms of knowledge, at least, um, it, you know, if you do it enough, you kind of start to put all the pieces together regardless of what area yeah. you're in. Um, like, you can know a pretty good amount about how the engine works as a 3D artist, and you can know almost almost all of how the engine works as a programmer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so the definitely the passion is something that um, I find there's a lot of on Roblox um, because you can sort of connect to making a game as I, sure. I would say, I would say, pro like a vast majority of the people who are game developers do also play games. I think it's incredibly rare that that's not the case. Yeah, I, I don't um, think I've ever met someone. That in fact, that, yeah, yeah, and especially on the, when it comes to something like Roblox, um, I think the sure. pipeline is typically you end up playing. Like for me, I used to play this and like Sploder, if you know what that is, and then like, yeah, yeah. Um, Minecraft and all kinds of things like that, and they have these these, and it's absolutely part of their their funnel. Like it's definitely on purpose um, that yeah, you sure. eventually end up in studio, or you end up working on the Minecraft mod, or you end up doing some random thing. And um, by doing that, you end up in in a pipeline of of learning how it works. Um, and it's so yeah. long as you're passionate about playing the game, it's also very, very simple to become very passionate about making them because um, it's it's a whole other outlet of things to know and things to learn. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, th I think that's a great answer. Um, thank you, thank you. And uh, do you think anyone can build a career on Roblox? Yes. Um, I used to not think so. I used to think, oh, I, I think everyone that's getting in now is going to have a really hard time. But I don't think it's ever been easier, in a sense. Yeah. Um, Roblox is providing so many tools. They're being very open about their, their benchmarking statistics for getting on the algorithm. Their tools are only getting easier. The UI layout recently got an update that's kind of in beta right now. Um, I think a lot of people that originally used it has backlash, but it's gotten simple. And I think because it's gotten simple, it's easier to learn. You'll know exactly where everything is. Um, buttons to open up for different uh, windows. Mm. Those are actually sorted underneath the actual tabs that they actually belong to, rather than a view tab that you has a ton of these lists of things. Yeah, makes it confusing. But now it's everything is super simple. Learning the algorithm, you don't need to completely pay attention to. If you know that your game is really fun, it, it'll work out eventually. Essentially, um, you can pay attention to the algorithm algorithm if you want. It's relatively simple, but it's also um, finicky i guess or, or um y you can't predict everything right of well i'm, um, I'm also uh, like so that's that's absolutely true there's and i'm personally of the opinion that so long as the game has a certain amount of retention to it and replayability and your your thumbnail isn't the worst thing on the whole planet yeah um which is hard to do uh if you you know you shouldn't just sink money into it but at some point i find that a good game as long as it's well made and the thumbnail is good and obviously you know everything else makes sense um it'll pick up to some yeah. degree uh just kind of in direct relation to how enjoyable the game is um it's super interesting as well for you to say that it's 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 easy now compared to um in the past because i think I think I agree with you. Um, there used to be this yeah. very weird, like, inner inner circle, and there still is a little bit, but, um, like, getting... You know, to give you an example, like, getting to RDC in, like, 2017 or 2018 was almost impossible. It was just the yeah. most random set out of... Like, if you, if you were just doing random stuff on the platform, you're never going to get an invite. But now it's like, if you... If you 
are working on the platform, if you're active on the dev form, you can get an invite for any number of reasons. And along and along with that, um, a, a million other things, the lines have just started to blur where it's a little bit more open access. Whereas uh, in the past, I just feel like it was, it was um, yeah. sort of a very direct number of people. Now I'll meet someone every other day. I meet someone who's done incredible things on the platform and I had never heard of them, um, yeah. which is incredible. Because they like, there's people in here. One of them uh, <laughs> works. I can't remember their name right now. Works on one of the the tower defense games. And like every game has incredible developers behind it now. Um, yeah, and so is, there's just crazy. so many opportunities. So many, so much growth has come from Roblox as as of late. It's it's a little crazy because I, I feel like I can walk up to anyone and they'll um, you know e either be working on the the platform or play it. Like today, I went to get coffee right before this. And the people in the line, they're like asking me, "Oh, what do you have planned for for this Sunday?" I told them like, "Oh, I'm just working, you know, have have to record all this stuff, and you know, like, just just having fun working." And they're like, uh, "What do you do?" I told them Roblox development. They said, "Oh, I play Roblox. <laughs> List listed ten different games on Roblox." And I'm like, "That's crazy. You're you look to be like 30." I didn't tell them that, but like they they're, they look like they're 30 years old and yeah. they're playing Roblox, and I just think that's so cool. Um, and they, it is. They it's also such an interesting. Games like it's it's much yeah. different than it used to be. Um, Most definitely. I, turned, I saw a tweet the other day that was like, D I don't even remember who who put this out, but it was just, do you tell people you're a Roblox developer? I, like I don't <laughs> explicitly say this. Uh, however, yeah. it's now it's now at a point where it's like it, in the past, if you told someone that they're probably oh. most of the time gonna be like, what are you even talking about right now? Um, and then yeah, yeah. now, if you say that to someone, they're like, oh, I was literally playing that yesterday. It's it's. It's kind of yeah. at the level, if not higher, than than Minecraft. As long as no one's uh, super mad at me for saying that, I, um, I I think Roblox is bigger than Minecraft. Yeah, personally. if I if I had to be perfectly honest, I think it's bigger now. Um, yeah, it used to be embarrassing to say, yeah, I do Roblox <laughs> development. You know, I remember those days of being in school and just being super quiet, not telling everyone that I'm a Roblox developer secretly. Yeah, well, it's it's also yeah. such a, like a niche skill set, and if you talk to someone and they're like, "Oh, I'm in marketing," you're like, sure. you know exactly what they do. But if, like, when I ask yeah. you what you do, there's there's so many different things that uh, that you probably do that I'm I'm not super familiar with. So there's just this this um, a ton of a ton of things to actually know um, that yeah. are super specific to what someone actually does on the platform. Um, yeah, most definitely. Let me see here. But Oh, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. Like the the one of the things I think about Roblox says is if you work at a AAA studio, you get pushed down into a very specific kind of role because there's so many people to fill every other role. Mm. But the the more smaller of a company you go down, the more you actually get to do and you get to have your hands on, maybe even delve into other regions of development. So that's the way I see Roblox is because you're most people are either a one man, two man, or three man team. They kind of have to venture off and break into separate groups. To take care of multiple things so they learn multiple things on the platform and, yeah, that's and that, that's the, definitely the beauty of roblox is that it really is powering imagination mm. at, at the end of the day absolutely yeah and you can you can tell as well like um you know you you have experience with this so you could be one to speak on it but as you in comparison to working at a smaller game game dev studio I mean, a lot of a lot of my personal work is just freelance so i get on for a little bit of time um I, one of my longer ones recently yeah. was like eight months and that was with a group of people who it was like four or five people deep they work on a game called cut the grass rp um and that a project like that yeah you kind of come on for something very specific but you also have to sort of help around where you can um because there's only so many hands on deck yeah um, for sure but then when you look at something that's potentially a larger, like, um, you know, GameFam is looking for programmers and not for, like, I mean, they may be looking for generalists, but they are looking for programmers, um, yeah. whereas uh, the smaller scale the studio is, they're sort of also just looking for developers. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Just just people around the, the, the scene that kind of know what they're doing um, for specific toolings and things like that. Yeah, that's a huge Which... thing as well. It, there's a lot yeah. of with these larger brands like GameFam and um, Super Social. You know, I guess I imagine Melon and things like they they want people who know how the platform works because um, it's it's a little daunting to take on a new game engine. Um, you know, I can't yeah. say so much about what I'm working on right now, but um, that that skill set is super marketable, especially when you work with someone who's um, highly qualified on a different game engine. 
uh there's there's so many like roblox does so much stuff for you that it's yeah, almost, it's almost unbelievable when you come from a different background uh, you don't worry about servers and you can pay practically nothing mm -hmm. you can get your game set up in a matter of a week um which is yep. just uh so so strange um when you come from a different background like that so yeah for sure 100 percent. like Ro roblox is like uh they they do practically everything for you almost like uh, they cut so much cost you can you can make a game and make tons of money for free on roblox and that's that's so different to that side of perspective like I, I grew up in a in a scene where my dad and my uncle were game developers all the way up at ea um they, they made like sim city and sims 3 sims pets all that all that stuff and mm -hmm. even the godfather game right so like it's been around my 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 life for forever but the moment I'm getting into Roblox and I'm telling my dad about all these things, he's just like, uh, uh, what? He's, he's like getting, he, he'd get um, confused. He, he doesn't know how things work on Roblox because it's so drastically different. Yeah. And it takes a learning curve almost in a sense. Because even Roblox, like, you don't have to program in your own garbage collector to clear up your memory or even stacks. You don't have to program any of that stuff. Because Roblox handles that all for you. You just have to understand how their tooling works. Right, yeah. Um, essentially in that, that sense. Yeah, no, absolutely, and, and and it's one of those things where like, well, you know, I I think I have a video on my channel about garbage collection, but uh, for anyone yeah. who doesn't know, that's just how how Lua comes around and cleans up uh, your memory alongside of your programs, um, which is actually part of Lua, and that's it's kind of the beauty of an interpreted language like that. Um, things are it's it's almost always a little bit slower, but uh, it's yeah. also very simple to learn and very easy to use, and so uh, Roblox was. Pretty well. I I see a thread sometimes on the dev forum, which I almost try to avoid at this point, uh, <laughs> reading. But uh, yeah. occasionally, a very a very common one there is how come no Python? How come no C plus plus? Well, it's it's oh, it's sort of an accessibility thing. It's also um, not always super simple to embed multiple languages like that. Um, yeah, and one hundred percent. Yeah, I think Lou is I think Lou is very specific, like very perfect for it. And at this point. Um, you know, it would it would almost be a waste of time to go in any other direction. So, yeah, yeah, I think I, I see it like that. But also, if they did somehow manage to bring multiple languages to the platform like Python, it only just makes working with teams more difficult yeah. because you have to find a very specific kind of programmer or specific person that knows the framework. It's it, I mean, we kind of already have that problem with um, open source frameworks yeah. at the moment. It's just finding someone that knows how to use Knit or uh, Matter or um, you know, all these different things, or even Fusion, technically, I would consider that as a UI framework library. Like, you'd have to find specific people to find fill these specific roles, and it just makes it more difficult in that sense. Um, so I think, let's keep the Lua Roblox, okay? Yeah. 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 That kind of leads into one of my other questions, actually. What would you say are your, your you talked briefly there about um, frameworks for programming. What would you say are your, like, programming essentials, or even, even outside of the, the programming space um you know, yeah. maybe you have a ui framework that you like a lot um things that come to mind for me are like knit although i don't typically advise people to use it all the time anymore just after after support for it has ended um but yeah. if there's any other things like that that you find that you use very very frequently i've been using maids a lot recently because um i'm a lazy bastard so uh, i just throw everything in one of those um but yeah, yeah. i mean it, it's completely like i Garbage collection um, based uh, open source modules are really great. Like I use one. I use uh, it's called Dumpster. It's made by a friend of mine called the uh, King King Andy. I've I've seen um, it. It's good. Yeah, yeah, very amazing. It can do tons of things. Whether that's um, it, it recent updates, you're allowed to control player um, sided events already built into it, mm. um, and you can add whatever object on there. It, it, I don't know. It's just it's super filled tons of great stuff so that's that's definitely an essential of mine um first off second off would be profile service and i think that mm. honestly should have came first profile service is like the most amazing data module you could ever use yep. you have to create an uh, interface for it um i wouldn't say unfortunately but profile service handles absolutely everything else uh session locking which is arguably important if you're having trading and things like that in your game so no one can duplicate their data um yeah i remember but, when profile service came yeah. around it was a bit of a game changer like yeah. um 
you know, setting up setting up data storage and just it can just be such a hassle. And before that, we had data store too um, from, from yep. Camp Karen. And um, for all that it's worth and it's great, uh, profile service has been uh, just. Uh, total like i i don't worry yeah. about data anymore like i used to be like oh i can't i can't even imagine setting yep. up the data system for this game it used to be my least favorite thing now i just have a wrapper on top of profile service because in all exactly. honesty a lot of the functionality there i don't find myself using all the time so um yeah my wrapper is <laughs> very very simple it's it's got a couple of functions in it um and i no longer worry about it so exactly yeah like pro pro software's the profile <laughs> service is, is really great. Um, yeah, I, all you have to do is get a get set, and I even have an update function, so that way it, just, it does set for me, and I just can run a function with it. Mm. Um, and that's all you need. And then profile profile service does absolutely everything else. Um, s stores, saves all data, loads it all. I don't think I've ever had an occurrence in a game where someone said, hey, I lost data, yeah. or my data, or something. Like it I don't think crazy. I've seen it once. That used to be yeah. like the biggest thing to because because tracking yeah. down data loss problems is so difficult. Hassle. It is very yeah. very tedious. Um, yep. And so like we had we actually had this problem on uh, on cut the grass where we had to transition over from a weird like um, gosh I don't even know how to explain it at this point but we're saving we were keeping tabs and and so this is this got set up before I had came on to this project and it was keeping tabs of data within a player object and then when the player was like pending to leave the game it would save all of the instance values um then which uh i mean understandably we would get a lot of data <laughs> a lot of data loss almost weekly um, yeah. So a massive project that took place there. Um, now, I, in terms of moving it over, I didn't actually play a big role in it, but um, we were moving all of that system over into profile service, which actually ended up going pretty smoothly just because of how how profile service is set up. So I guess the point of yeah. it is, um, yeah, that's definitely something to to look into if you haven't tried that already. Most definitely, very very robust system for usage purposes. It's like perfect. Yeah. Um, do, do you have any other essentials, or are those kind of your main two? Um, I'm going to shout myself out. Okay. Um, and this one's not really so... It's not public. I don't have any documentation built on it just yet, but I use it all the time. It's my my personal framework. Um, I took the this knit style of having a, a initiation and start function. Yep. Um, but what I built into it is that you don't have to actually require the module specifically. So I don't have to do like local, it's called Unite is the name of the module. Okay. Uh, so you don't have to do local Unite, blah, 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 get that. And then use Unite dot get this thing. I actually built it in to where um, post initialization sequences and things like that will actually add a function to your module itself. So whether that's like your, your data system and such and whatnot, it actually builds a function in called get system. So I can use self colon get system and get a system from somewhere else without having to find the module. Hmm. Thankfully, if like you're in any other module that's not a part of the actual framework, then you could use the, you can go grab the, the, the module variable and use the get system throughout that. Um, but essentially I just wanted to make it where setting up is as easy as possible. Um, functions are all there for you at your disposal without having to find any other objects in, in your database or whatnot. It actually just brings it in, you just use self get system and you have your system and it works out completely fine that's awesome is that something that is public now or you're or you're planning to make public in the future yes it, it is actually public i just don't have any documentation on it you right, can pull okay. it in on wally um using my tag and at unite but i use that with every project super simple extremely lightweight as well it's maybe like the server side is only like 70 oh, to wow. 100 lines client side is also just about the same and what's cool on the server is that it also builds in a player added and player removing uh, functions that will run as well. So all you have to do is just put that in as a separate function within your module and it works. Hmm. It's really great. Super cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess this is something we have kind of spoke about at this point, but um, not necessarily um, in, in the same way of asking about like skills, 
But do you have any yeah. advice for someone who's a little closer to starting out on Roblox now that's looking to make a career out of it? Yeah, um, I think one, find where your passion lies, whether, you know, try, try different fields, 3D art and programming and whatnot. I think I found programming to be more around people that kind of have a more attention disorder sort of thing, like ADHD. Yeah. Um, programming tends to be around there. Like, I, I think I probably am closer to the line of having ADHD. Not diagnosed, so I'm not going to say that, but, you know, I, I definitely think so right. um, for more programming. But find what role makes you feel the most like you, I think, is, is the most important step, first of all. Um, and learning and everything like that will come, come with ease. F make friends. Make friends and find your spot because that's all you need because your friends will help you learn. You can make games with them. You just have fun. Yeah. With Roblox, it's all about just enjoying your time and doing it um, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Um, another question I have is, uh, you know, do you do you expect Roblox to still be around in the future? And I don't mean more of like, obviously, it's going to be here in like five years, but 20, 30 years from now, what do you kind of see the future, the future of Roblox becoming? Um, I'm going to say something that David's probably not going to hate me for, but I actually don't think Roblox is going to be around forever. Right. Um, whether that's 20 years or so, I don't, I think there's, there's going to come a day where people are either going to stop using it or it's just going to become too, um, it's, it's just the people aren't going to have as much interest in it or Roblox is going to release an update that completely tanks their game. You yeah. know, so, something, something is going to come to where it's not going to be forever which is also kind of why it's like, you know, make your games, do all this fun stuff, make your money, and use that to build and invest in your future. And that's what I'm doing right now, is just trying to do it as, as much as I can for my future, aside from Roblox. Because I don't see it as something that could be there forever. Right, um, yeah. However, it might. Um, and it could become a part of our daily lives. This this could be a forever thing, and, you know, there's no knowing. But I'm I'm it's better for me to plan for it not being essentially yeah no absolutely that's that's i mean it's always better to, to plan for the worst case scenario over yeah. the better one um yeah i kind of agree with you uh it, or at the very least i see it kind of transitioning some way um into potentially being a little bit different than how it is right now um so yeah um i'm trying to see here do you expect it to kind of change uh, around the uh, the artificial intelligence model innovation, or um, do you think game development is a little too uh, too abstraction heavy for AI to, to come at it in any serious way yeah. anytime soon? Yeah, the the way I see it is um, when you play a game, um, you you know you can kind of understand and see that the game design has someone's put their heart into it. Um, there's a human element to almost everything in life, and especially the things that are more amazing about life is there's a human element to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think bringing AI on sort of with Roblox, I don't think the move would be to type a prompt and it makes an entire game for you, because I don't think that'll work. Those ones aren't going to be very you know, amazing, it's not going to be huge. Like, it's even with music. We have music that can be completely made with AI, but no one listens to it, no one cares. It's not It's not us, it's not human civilization, right? With with Roblox, essentially, is also like it. I, I think I see AI more as a tooling to help people create their vision, yep. um, but not taking the human element out of it. And I think if they did that, then that's the wrong move and can ultimately end up in bad business practice. Yeah, absolutely, um, and that's actually, I, I yeah. threw this question at Isaac as well when he was on here, and uh, he pretty much said the same thing to me. I'm, I'm yeah. in the same boat. I think AI is kind of, um, it works best as a tool. You know, if you'll very quickly find out that, and I, I have a video on this, but I mean, anyone who's done um, some amount of serious programming will find out if you take your system and you throw it in ChatGPT and you just tell it to fix <laughs> it, um, you aren't really going to get anywhere anytime soon. Um, yeah. it just struggles so much as soon as a task becomes like moderately complex to think through, um, it's just not there yet. So I think yep. it works very well as a tool I use currently, I use, um, Codium in visual studio, uh, although yep. I know GitHub copilot is also great. So I think it works, works very, very well for these specific purposes. 
um, and it's sort of where I imagine it to be in the future as well. Yeah, for sure. I think AI has a spot in, in the world. Um, I, I know artists and such won't really enjoy it or like that. Mm. Um, but I, the way I see the use of AI and people using it is um, I feel like the, the, the where the data gets pulled from should in a way be sort, sort of consent. But also I think as people around the world, we kind of have to help each other out. And I think that that's where AI kind of comes in to yeah. kind of link that, that bind. Um, so I like I'm completely open with uh, AI taking all my code to kind of help people out with programming other things and things like that. Like it's it's not it's never going to be that good to where it does everything for you because if it does everything for you, you have no clue, you have no knowledge or understanding of how your system works at all. Yeah, and that's um, sort of the biggest very the biggest thing I think with it um, when I when people say that uh, or uh, the the biggest argument to be made at least. Um, against yeah. AI, you know, taking all software engineering or programming jobs, um, is that you, even if you trans transition into more of a prompt engineer, you still need someone with a heavy computer science background to debug these things. Because as soon as uh, AI bumps into a limit of something it can't quite figure out, um, well, the CEO is not going to debug that. So it's it's yeah. just <laughs> it's just one of those things. Um, I wanted yeah, to because sure. we're kind of coming up on. Um, where I'd sort of like the length of the podcast to be. Um, we have a few questions here from people that I'd like to, to throw. You've got two of them here from, uh, from a YouTube post I had put out there. Um, so the first one here is from Dino Desso, uh, and he wants to know what would be your ranking of the most important game aspects when it comes to building, modeling, scripting, UI, VFX, organization, etc. So I guess how you would rank them against each other. Yeah, thank you, Dino Desto, for that that question. Um, I would say the like so so essentially putting into a list um, what what would come first in terms of importance. Yeah, I mean we and, can do that. That's software. sort of what I what I would think. Okay, um, I would say borderline programming is definitely the most important because you can't have a game um, without programming. Um, some would argue that you can make a completely empty game that doesn't work just with art and people can just explore it, but it's not really a game. That's more an experience, I guess, or, uh, Roblox is going to be like, that's the same thing. But, um, yeah, I'd say programming, 3D art, UI, um, animations, and then UX. Um... I think UX ties everything together to make yeah. it a successful product and function properly and actually have people enjoy the game. But you can't do any of that without having an actual game to, to essentially do that with. Um, and that requires animations, UI, 3D art, set slash building an environment, um, and then programming. I think that's definitely the tree I would go with. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Programming is just one of those things where, like, it is programming, but it's also... Um you innately learn a lot more about the engine altogether. Yeah. So um, your expertise overall sort of not this, and it, it's no way to put down any other, any other field, but it sort of outweighs because you can speak on um, <clears throat> optimality in terms of other components as well. You can speak on what even makes sense for UI, what makes for sense sure. for modeling, when should something be a mesh or not, um, all sorts of like random things like that. Uh, you can, can probably speak a little bit better on um only because of the engine standpoint um yeah and uh yeah so the the other question we had is from keck prod and he wants to know at what point did you realize that this could be something you could live off financially or was it a long-term goal of yours yeah thank you uh, keck prod for that question i think um when i started i didn't know you can make money in roblox at all until like at least probably four years into it um yeah maybe yeah four or five years into it i i realized oh wait you can make money off of this um and from there i, I guess it kind of became a goal that i just wanted money to buy a computer mm. that was my biggest goal at first was just to buy a computer um took me about four years from there to actually get the computer i think a, a cup maybe it took me a, a quite a while to realize that, oh, I can make a living off of this. Um, game development was always something I wanted to do for my whole life. 
I just didn't know Roblox was the place to do it on, um, essentially. So it, it took a while, but um, yeah, I mean, I think for the most part, it just took maybe a couple game releases that went made me some money that I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. This is the move. Yeah. That's what I need to do. It is. It's very surprising. Um, it's hard to it's hard to speak on, but it's it's one of those things where pe- pe- people talk about um, uh, passive income, and it's not necessarily passive. But um, if your product is good enough, then you do kind of make money uh, all day yeah. long, all week long, um, and it's just like it's random. It's hard to speak on it until you have some amount of experience with it. But um, I remember when I when I had done. Uh, DevX for the first time just blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's definitely very very interesting. Um, yeah, it's it, it's it, it's an exciting thing for sure. Um, and the, the cool part is even like I, it's not even just myself living you know off of Roblox. Like I, I unfortunately like my my parents were never we we were never the most fortunate people with money and financials and things like that and jobs. So uh, my dad lost his job and I had to basically take over. Um, so Roblox has actually allowed me to pay for my entire family of six and, you know, make sure that rent's all paid for, car payments and things like that, and internet things. Um, and that's, like, Roblox has just become a, um, a miracle, I guess, in that sense. Just the fact that it's, it's here, that I, I'm able to do this. Otherwise, you know, you never know. You never know what could happen. Yeah, that's very inspiring. That's, that's, that is incredible. Um, yeah, so... That is that is just super inspiring. Um, yeah, so I think I think at this point um, we can kind of wrap this up. If you have anything final you kind of want to say, uh, any advice you want to give, anything like that, um, you know, you're you're absolutely welcome to. But other otherwise, we'll kind of wrap this up. Yeah, um, I think one one thing I'd say is um, never don't don't ever let anyone stop you from doing what you want to do. Um, especially if it's something passion driven, you know, no, no one knows as best as you. And I think with Roblox, you can create anything, you can do anything and you can be very amazing. You can do great things. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I think that is going to do it for the second episode here. Um, we've been with Mr. In Dark. Uh, 